Good evening. Good evening. I will be actually surprised if someone sees this live, but I do hope someone sees this after the fact. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite oscillators. And I have been talking to a lot of people who have been telling me, you as an, a trader cannot use oscillators. If you use oscillators, you're not being doing right by you're supposed to be doing only price um, action anal analysts because price is the number one indicator um, so what I'm going to be doing is talking to you all about chiken money flow it is an indicator in my own words tells you if money is coming in or leaving a security um, your currencies no matter what if it has price if it has volume you're able to use the chiking money flow. It's pretty much your hidden tool, your um, your your glasses, your your spectacles to what's really going on with uh, with these companies. So I'm going to read the, de the definition from TradingView. Chiking money flow is a technical analysis indicator used to measure money flow volume over a set period of time. Money flow volume is a metric used to measure buying and selling pressure of a security for a single period. CMF then sums money flow volume over a user-defined look back period, usually around 21 days. It also fluctuates between one and negative one. This can be used as a way to further quantify changes in buying pressure and selling pressure and can help anticipate future changes and therefore trading opportunities. All right, guys, so right now on this website, it has Pandora as one of an example. So you see right here, guys, that is a bearish divergence. The price is still sort of consolidating, but you're seeing money flowing out. When you're seeing this divergence, you have to know that the price has to follow. If money is leaving, is there's more selling going on, there's less buyers. With less buyers, price has to go down goes down you see higher highs so that's a high that's a high price was going to come back up the selling pressure was going to finally leave and price came up then you've had your your bearish divergence but it has consolidated and it hasn't failed too much so this isn't your overall okay it's going down i have to short it or hey guys, it's um, it's going up. I have to buy. It's just one of those indicators that literally shows you is money flowing in, is money flowing out. And I'm gonna show you a better example. And sorry guys, I you I'm I switch over to the white and black. I mean white and blue because um, red and green to me is actually very bad. Black or well, green and red. What does it to me, it pretty much allows me to say, okay, buy in the green, sell in the red. When in reality, you sometimes need to buy in the red, and sometimes you need to sell in the green. It's seriously not that sort of stop and go. So you, I needed a neutral uh, color scheme. And white <clears throat> white is green, um, and then blue is uh, down, like down day, so like red. So pretty much a good substitute. And even some of my oscillators I've changed. Uh, let's see, check in money flow. All right, guys. So here is the daily chart of SPY. Uh, you see that we're still in an upward, upward channel for quite some time. However, we did have those few days of pure panic, gap downs, strong selling. Nobody knows what to do. However, we do, you know, had a bounce. Right here, we, we're good, right, on the CMF. Back up, went down, and we've had a strong divergence. And the zero point is where you know that sell pressure is there. The selling pressure is so powerful that it has now turned the CMF into a negative value. So with this bearish divergence, you knew that price had to come down. It crossed down at negative right around here. It still hit a little high. What's going on? You, everyone's like, well, it's, it's going bullish. We're going to continue to go up further. However, again, you have to know that this is bad territory. One, two, three, four, five. 
And really, I did continue this one as the same territory as being out of the zone. But this stock, the SPY, S&P 500 ETF, does not like to be out of the upward channel. That is extremely overbought. And it has been smacked down again. So on top of knowing that it doesn't like uh, trading outside of this channel, you then see this CMF on a strong decline. When I say strong, that's pretty strong, guys. Let's draw a trend line on that decline, guys. That's pretty strong. That is pretty freaking strong. So we got to notice right where we see around here. This is this is going on a strong decline. And I got to see, figure out what's really going on. Cross to the negative. Really got to see what's going on. And it is actually at the at another peak. So they had this selling. They were about to like really sell. And they really did. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to be a fortune teller with using this CMF. But you're going to be able to detect Wow, selling is going on. I need to be not fearful, but have my eyes open and understand that this fall has to come. And it did with strength. Uh, but this stock is then holding to its holding to its own values of staying within this channel. Uh, the smart money buys at the bottom of the channel, sells the bounce every time. Every time, let's see what this CMF is doing on the weekly chart. I love the weekly chart as well, guys. Have to have to use different time frames, and the higher the time frame, the better. I'm so sorry. So, on the weekly chart, it doesn't do just that much justice because it's still positive even with that strong drop. But uh, yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, the the bear market it has to come i'm not saying when but it has to come and being honest on these higher time frames here is your support a lot of people will be just very confused if we get a drop all the way down here like we would be like huh y you said what I check my portfolio, I'm down 30%. Just know if we're a bear, we've got to be extremely bear. We've had two drops on our last bear markets, 46%, 54%. Just be mindful. This is all this is not financial advice. I'm so sorry. But a drop would would make sense if we go back to a prior support on a higher time frame. You could say possibly that around this 255 would be support. So let's say that would be our first key support level. But what's what I've learned today in a video, in a podcast, it doesn't matter what you think is support. In this podcast or this audiobook that I heard, uh, analysts told a broker, hey, that's support. Uh, that is the low of the day. Nobody would sell right at support. He called in real life and said, hey, I'm going to sell $2 million worth of corn at that low of the day, broke the support, and it pushed down 10 cents more. Anyone can do that in this market. So if we're like, oh, we're going to buy at this low right at 257, this is the low. This is where it has to bounce. Somebody, the shorts, may sell right here at the support level, break it, and allow this to free fall all the way to two-thirds heat. Pure fear, pure panic. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody. But uh, that's that's another talk for another, another story. Interest rates are rising, and they will continue to rise, guys. Um, but if you are into charting, Again, oscillators are not our everything, but if we do see strong declines on our chicken money flow, you do have to watch out. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all learned something. I will do more videos on and off, but I am you know, currently reading lots of books, reading uh, PDFs, uh, getting to know different traders and their strategy, and just becoming that the better trader when I bounce back and get back into the market. I will see y'all soon. Let's see.